So the last topic that we were covering with regards to unit one, the cell before our test, were cell membranes. So we had already discussed that cell membranes are made up of a bilayer of phospholipids, and that bilayer uh, of phospholipids has each phospholipid being comprised of a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. And because of the necessity of having the hydrophobic tails being away from water, the only structure that they're able to create is this bilayer where all of the hydrophobic tails are on the inside and then the hydrophilic heads are pointing towards a fluid. So this would be the cytoplasm inside the cell and this would be any fluid that's outside the cell. We also discussed that cell membranes are selective, selectively permeable, which means that only certain things can pass through them. So when we talked about diffusion as one way to get across the cell membrane, this would be a type of molecule that wants to get in, and this would be inside the cell membrane. And in order for it to get across, it has to diffuse. Diffusion just means it goes from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration to reach an equilibrium. When it's water that's moving from one area to another, we call it osmosis. So osmosis is just the diffusion of uh, specifically water. So when you're talking about a cell in different types of solution, a solution is just something where you have a solute dissolved in a solvent. A solvent is usually water. So in this case here, say that the green molecules are salt. Then what's happening in this picture is that inside the cell has more salt than outside. So you call it a hypotonic solution. In hypotonic solutions, what happens is water comes from the environment and fills the cell in an attempt to dilute the salt concentration inside the cell. It doesn't need to be salt, it could also be sugar. So if water's coming in, the cell is going to fill up, and if it's an animal cell, it bursts. If it's a plant cell, it just is, stays very turgid. Isotonic just means there's the same amount on each side of the cell with regards to molecules of the solute. And in hypertonic, it means that you have more solute on the outside than you do on the inside. And so what happens is water wants to leave the cell to dilute the atmosphere, and when it does that, it dehydrates the cell. So when you're talking about an animal cell, what happens is the cell shrivels, and when you're talking about a plant cell, it becomes plasmalized. Plasmalized just means that the cell membrane starts to wrinkle. So you can see that here in this uh, little diagram. You can, the cell membrane wrinkles, but because the cell wall is still there, the cell maintains its uh, structure and integrity. Animal cells look like this. Hypotonic will burst. Hypertonic will shrivel. Animal cells, it won't burst. It'll just get very full and hypertonic, it'll become plasmalized. So besides diffusion, there's other ways that molecules can pass uh, through the cell membrane. So we tend to classify these methods of transportation across the cell membrane as either passive or active. Active means it requires ATP, it requires energy, and passive means it doesn't require any energy, it just goes with the flow. So under the category of passive, you have three. You have simple diffusion, which we've already talked about. You have diffusion with a channel protein, and you have diffusion with a carrier protein. The only difference between these two and this one right here is that there's assistance. So instead of just simple diffusion, you may need facilitated diffusion, which means you need the aid of some kind of protein embedded in the cell membrane. So facilitated and simple diffusion are both methods of passive transport across the cell membrane. So the two types of facilitated diffusion would be using a channel protein, which acts like a bridge, or like a tube that the molecules can go through, or you could use a carrier protein, which is very specific to what can bind to it. So if these molecules want to get across, they bind to it, and the receptor recognizes the molecule, and then it will let it come through. So in simple diffusion, the molecules need to be able to dissolve through the membrane. So if the membrane is made of fat, then these molecules have to be fatty. In molecules that aren't fatty and can't dissolve across the membrane, that's when they got to use facilitated diffusion. So if it's not a method of passive transport, meaning that they go from an area of high to low concentration, so they're going with the flow, which is what's happening in all these three cases, then it's active. And active requires energy because you're going against the grain. You're going from a low concentration to a high concentration. And there's two types of active transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. So in endocytosis, endo means to internalize. So what's happening is you're taking things from the environment around you and you're internalizing them, bringing them inside. So if it's a food or solid particle that you're using to ingest, then that's phagocytosis. If it's a liquid that you're ingesting, it's pinocytosis. So again, what's happening is the cell membrane basically envelops whatever it wants to ingest, and it takes it in and turns it into a vesicle of either food or liquid. 
In exocytosis, what's happening is you have particles that want to leave the cell or exit. So this happens with lysosomes when they break down materials inside the cell and they want to get rid of them. You have the particles inside of a little vesicle. The vesicle makes its way to the cell membrane and then it fuses with the cell membrane and lets all of the particles out. So those are methods of active transport because they could go against the grain. There could be lots of molecules already out here, but you still want to continue to get more out there. You don't want any dead, uh, useless material inside the cell that you don't need to be using. So if you're going against the grain, it's active transport, requires ATP. If you're going with the grain, with the concentration gradient, high concentration to low concentration, like all of these three, it doesn't require any energy. It's just that it's either going to be simple diffusion if you're a fat, or if you're not a fat, you need to use facilitated diffusion and use a protein. So you can either use a channel or a carrier protein.